Hi guys, Jamie here. Uh, thought I'd make a quick video showing uh, the 3D space um, using uh, like a, maybe a little little drum sound or something like this. Uh, there was a question on the board, so I figured I'd uh, do a video because I'm very interested in this as well. Um, so anyway, uh, what we need to uh, think about with 3D space, of course, is uh, height, width, and depth. And the way that we control sounds by... Uh, you know, it, within the, that framework of like a 3D space uh, are, of course, pitch or frequency, uh, depending upon the type of sound you use. Uh, width would be panning, and the depth would be controlled by volume and other uh, time-based effects like reverbs and uh, delays, right? So uh, what we could do is get like a sound that, that's like a drum, like a tom or something, because that, that has a nice transient but it also has a little bit of pitch right so maybe some like like uh, mid toms or, or high toms something like this um, and I've got all my high toms set up already I've, I've uh, kind of resampled and or not resampled but sliced them into um, different MIDI notes or different um, samplers and number five looks good so what I'll do is put number five uh, put 16th notes in there, make sure it works. Sounds good. And what I can do is change the sound a little bit. And that works just fine. So, um, all right. So first thing that we could do is get the pitch going, right? So we are on slice number five. And let me open all this so that... And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the transpose. So if we click this, right, that's what we're going to mess with right here. And then we go over to our clip. We automatically have it in the envelope. So let's go over to the envelopes. Um, and let's say... Over the course of like maybe four bars, so we're going to unlink the the actual envelope, and we'll go over the course of four bars, and we want the height to be, um, like an octave or something, right? Is that an octave? Yeah. Eleven point eight eight. Why does it do that? Uh Jesus. All right, so, and right, I'll do this the other way. I'll just put it up to twelve. There we go. Yeah, apparently, if if you have it on draw, it'll it'll do like the minuscule, like the, the sense or whatever. Okay, let's see what that sounds like. All right, great. That's going to work just fine. So uh, next what we can do is, um, because it's going to control our height, but we're going to essentially create an illusion, right, that it's actually getting higher when in fact it really isn't. I mean... The pitch is getting higher, but I mean, in the sound space, we have to give it the illusion of getting higher. Now, what we need to do that is to add another, you know, the other dimensions in there, right? That's what the whole idea of 3D is, is that there needs to be a reference point. So the reference, next reference point we're going to set up is the panning. All right, so what we could do is we can start looking at uh, Slice 5's pan and click that, go over to the next envelope, and there you go. Um, ready to go. So we'll unlink it. We'll put for four bars. And... Uh, let's make it swing out right. Of course, we want it to cross halfway through back at the middle at the top of the pitch. So we'll put it back at zero, right? And we'll make it swing a little bit left. Now, I don't know how this is actually going to sound, but I'm going to put a little bit of a dramatic swing towards the middle. So let's see, two sixteenths away, two sixteenths away. That, that should be a little bit more symmetrical, but let's see what this sounds like. All right, and let's let let's get the panning starting a little bit early, like a little bit slow going. Okay, and then a little bit slower to come back. Right, um, the the tendency is to actually make envelopes that that look symmetrical, but I find in my experience that when you offset them to not be symmetrical, it makes more like it sounds more natural. Like this is going to gradually uh, pan out right. Now, most people would w want to try to pan it back, you know, get it to come back really quickly, but uh, these aren't exactly symmetrical, uh, if you notice. Like, I'm kind of closing the distance here um, on the pan 
right, but on the pan left, I'm, I'm bowing it a little bit so that it comes back a little bit later. I find that uh, these types of envelopes really make it sound much more natural. All right, and I might actually extend the pan a little bit longer, right, and have it swing back late. See what I'm saying? All right, so let's see what that sounds like. Maybe that, that might sound pretty good, so right off the bat. And, of course, I'm not really too terribly interested in... Um, you know, perfection right at this moment, but it's, uh, but I'm trying to maybe get it to sound good right off the, right off the bat. So let's see here. So I don't have to do so much, um, changing of it later. Okay. That was pretty good, but I want it to swing way out left. All right. So, um, it really starts to come back. I mean, it really goes left quite a, you know, quite quickly. So I might close the distance and maybe not make it hit the left uh, so quickly, right? Um, and then make it come back a little bit slower and then maybe exponentially close in. Let's see how that sounds. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe to gradually make it go left, that'll be easier. Let's see. Okay, so it starts to fall in pitch there, so let's extend it even more. And I know I'm taking a long, long time to sort of do this, but uh, I want it to sound right, right, for you. So there we go. So that sounds good. I mean, you see what I'm trying to do here, right? Okay, so now what we can do is use the volume envelope, which we could just click right there uh, because we don't have to necessarily isolate it to clip five, but we'll get a length of four. Uh, all right, so the track volume, it's going to be full blast. And then um, so somewhere as it starts to pan away and then starts to come back, what we want to do is we want it to get quieter and quieter. So let's see um, if we offset it a little bit. That might be nice too. All right, and I'm not going to spend so much time as I did on, you know, the panning. <laughs> All right, but uh, what we'll do is we'll try to get this, you know, sounding somewhat natural. All right, just have a neat little, oh, I don't know, kind of like a, some kind of curve in there and see what that sounds like to give the impression of it getting further away. Okay, so there we're starting. If you if you close your eyes and listen to that, you can sort of hear that there's like a circular space that's being created by this tom as it sort of wanders around in the sound space, right? From the panning to the pitch, you know, the pitch gives it the the sort of not the I mean not the visual appearance, okay, but the aural appearance that it's actually getting higher in like in your in your mind's eye, right? So if you close your eyes and listen to it, it sort of seems like it's elevating just ever so slightly, like sort of like an oval that's going up. Almost as if it's a circle that's being, you know, the top of it is being pushed away from you, from you while the other side is, is kept closer to you. You know, you get that, uh, that oval type shape. So listen to it again. Right. Now, maybe the panning isn't exactly perfect. You know, it does come back a little bit quick. Um... And we could always, uh, of course, fix that. But I mean, uh, you get the idea. Now, the last thing that we can do to sort of uh, to 
enhance the idea that there's actually space between you and that far away spot is to maybe add like uh, a little bit of reverb so that it creates, um, you know, like I said, that space in between. So if we put a reverb on here and let's go with a little bit of, oh, I don't know, let's, let's see what presets we have in here, like a hall, a church, a dark hall, a concert hall, concert hall might be good. So about 19% sounds good, right? So 19%. So what we're let's get the dry wet going on an envelope over the course of four bars, right? So let's unlink that, and the the top of that should be. Well, let's see. Is that gonna? How is that gonna work? Is that gonna go? Let's put this. Um, we said about 19%, right? So let's put that at about 20. 20 will be good. I mean, you know what I'm trying to do here. Put the dry wet all the way to the top, and we will create an envelope that peaks somewhere like around maybe that sort of space like right here you know so that we get you know the crux of of when that uh when it's getting further away and let's let's sort of taper it right oops sort of taper it so that we start to get a little bit of reverb going away um and also coming back right so let's see how that sounds So there you go. So, you know, building, you know, a three dimensional space, um, you know, I'll play this one more time. Uh, but the the idea of using panning and volume and also pitch as a way to create this sense of, you know, uh, three dimensional height, uh, height, depth and width. Right. Um, and of course, using effects very carefully to uh, give the sense of space between you and um, or distance, maybe even between you and an element in your mix. OK, so here it is one more time, a couple more times. So uh, there you go. So I hope this was helpful.